Go. What? The intro got messed up. <laughs> Why? I don't know. You're alive now. Oh. I had to stand the introduction, got messed up, and I'm behind the biggest sofa. Uh, I've ever blacked out on me. It was outer space. Looks like outer space. I've ever seen when I when I first saw this. It's 115 inches long, you guys. It's 42 inches deep, and four men delivered it. If you can believe that, four men, and it's here at the shop. And uh, I'm looking at it, going, "You can't be afraid, right?" But I was thinking that, you know, I heard about this meteorite heading towards us, and I was, <laughs> I was thinking it's in the shape of this sofa. Uh, you know, it's just so big. Anyhow. Um, I'm, if I have time, I want to show you, um, we just featured on YouTube, you guys can see it already, we just posted it, and we just did it today on YouTube, about manufacturers, how you can improve on a manufacturer's design, and this is exactly the piece of furniture that is qualifies for that, and I, I, hopefully I can show you live too, uh, but if you want to see it on YouTube, certainly you can check that out. So we have a lot of business to take care of today, and uh, we heard from, um, I hope, that Mona gets a hold of us and uh, through comment section, Patrick, uh, that would be great because she's got a particular uh, problem that she has on a piece of furniture and so doesn't Pam. Pam, uh, thank you for posting and this is really interesting. I have an answer for you, a solid answer for you about this piece of furniture. And Patrick, you have that up, that's up now? Yeah. Is it? Okay, so what you see there, you guys, she's got a, a cut that she's wondering about. She's got a stuffing on the seat. You're looking at the side of the chair and it looks like it had caning on it or will still have caning on it. And she's asking, how do you make that cut around that arm right there? And she's got really good direction, really good, Pam, how you, you know, you have these arrows here. And you see the bottom arrow, it says fabric goes on frame all around here. She's got the, all the arrows going in the right direction. For me, I understand it completely. I understand what she has to do. You cannot, it's impossible to make a cut to cover this. So what you need to do is uh, you need to put a piece of fabric on there first before you make any cuts, before you upholster the seat. You cut out a, it looks like it might be a four inch by four inch piece of fabric um, and you're gonna blind tack it, right? You see where those the grouping of the three arrows are up top? So you're gonna take the fabric and you're gonna work from the back side and you're gonna blind tack a piece of fabric. Guys, let me just bring it up to show you got a blind tack piece of fabric so her back side of the fabric's up here. She puts her cardboard tack tape here and then she's going to pull that down and tack it down the bottom or staple it. And then she can lift her Dacron and kind of slide the fabric here and then staple her fabric here. So she's got a piece of fabric already in place and sometimes I don't put any padding at all. And sometimes I put a thin layer like a half a layer of, of half inch Dacron in there. Not much. Minimize that. And the other thing is when you cut that, no matter what fabric you have, if it's a velvet, if it's a stripe, if it's a floral, it's, the top goes this way. Disregard what's happening to the rest of the chair. But that has to be top like this. It just is what it is. There's no way, it's, uh, Martha Washington chairs are a little bit different. Different. You can, get a, you can do a cut on a Martha Washington chair, but it's a little different here. You cannot make the cut effectively to go around here in one piece of fabric. So that's the answer, Pam. I hope that helped you out. So let's go to the next series of comments and questions. Um, is there any other Facebook business though, Patrick? I know Jimmy's been on there talking about something. Um, let me just check that out actually. Let's just go back to the forum. Jimmy's been commenting. You yeah, that's a couple of wise questions. Yeah, I mean, we always like Jimmy's sense of humor, so let's, let's check it out. So, uh, oh, for Pam's question, he said, only Professor Kevin of the world-renowned Institute of Upholstery can answer that. <laughs> He's a wise guy, isn't he? <laughs> uh. Although I have to say, it's Sweden. I, had a, I, I mentioned before, I had a Swedish intern here for one summer. She was wonderful, and they, they do have uh, an institution or a, a, a trade college, and she actually had her bachelor's in upholstery. And she's about 32, and she came in here, and man, she was really good. She was a good worker, and she had uh, the, the, all the fundamentals down that you needed, plus even more. I thought I was getting an apprentice. I thought when she when she contacted me to come, I thought I was getting you know somebody pretty green. But as it turns out, she told me a few things. She was really good, really good person too. You know, she was she was very generous um, with her time, and and she she learned obviously she did learn things from me too. 
but I enjoyed um, having her that summer. And anybody, um, I think, would have welcomed her uh, into their upholstery shop. She was wonderful. But anyhow, uh, let's. Uh, so, is there any other business on Facebook, Patrick? Not yet. I'm waiting for Mona to post her thing. Okay. Other than that. Well, let's get right to some of these uh, comments. We did post it. Uh, restoring a vintage 19. Uh, we have a question first. So, live questions always get uh, priority here, you guys. So. Pam asks, do I cover the vertical fabric edges going over this blind tack piece with welding on both edges parallel to the arm? Can you repeat that? Do I cover the vertical fabric edges going over this blind tacked piece with welting on both edges parallel to the arm? She doesn't have to put welting on that. She can just do that as a, as a pleat pan. And, and the, the top part that you blind tack is only going to show as a seam, no piping. You don't want to put piping um, on such a small area. It doesn't look great. It just, it's going to just appear as a seam. And and what when you're going down this way, I wouldn't recommend. I would recommend that as a pleat, just as a, as a pulled piece of fabric. Optional would be if, if you hand stitch it to the to the blind tack piece. Um, and and that's my answer. I think when you're dealing in small areas like that, you want to avoid you know putting too much piping, small things of piping. You know it doesn't look that great. You're better off with no piping. Does that make sense? Uh, I think I answered that. I think I answered her question. That's how I would do it. You would ask Mona. This is more from. This is for Mona. When you're ready. Yeah. All right. Well, let's let's go to Mona because um, Mona had some interesting questions, and she's and she's on Facebook, um, the forum. So let's keep going with that. So, Mona says hi. Suggestions and possibilities with this chair. It's been top stitched then attached to the piece and buttons placed afterwards. Also suggest cotton on top or underneath the upholstery fabric. So now I understand, Mona, when, you were, when I was talking to you, I really didn't understand what they had done. So what you see here with this stitched, this is stitched to any material batting underneath, whether it be foam or kapok. I think you were talking about it, it might have been kapok, but I see a picture, it's the foam. That is a machine, that is a manufacturer's trick. That's a, a, a manufacturer's, have special machines first of all that do that. I, uh, if you have a big machine you might be able to do this but you're going through a one inch piece of foam and the top of the fabric, I don't even do that. I, when I have a chair that comes in like this I recommend to the client that they still want this diamond tufting, I want to do it by hand. I, I, that means no stitching, it's all the pleats are done by hand and they're just loose pleats. And you can get, what's the name of that video Patrick with the sofa? They, we did like a six pot or an eight pot sofa with me. You see me doing tufting. Right, I know what you're talking about. But but I feel it's a it's big tough. Mid century, it was a long time ago. It was a long time ago, but it's on, on YouTube. YouTube's always a good reference moment to go back to. I know you do that, but you will never see me do one of these here because I, the, the reason I say it's a trick is because when you have a thousand of these chairs that you need to do, you're going to have somebody just stitch these backs all day long. You know, and, and there's no hands that touch the interior of this, right? Um, except they're, they're just the, the only hands that touch it would be the, on the outside where they staple it. That's it. And and they're taught how to do that. They're not taught how to do hand tufting. And this isn't hand tufting. I would avoid this, but I can't believe you guys. If this is up right now, Patrick, mm -hmm. I want people to look at that picture on the right, that middle picture on the right, to see how many buttons. Mona mentioned that this thing is loaded with buttons. Um, it, it almost, it reminds, well, it, it reminds me of the, the really the um, diamond hand tufts. The old diamond hand tufts were that close together. You know, you see this a lot in those old Victorian pieces where they have the three backs. You know, they have a back, um, three oval backs, and they're all tufted like this. So it's an old-fashioned way of, uh, the presentation's old-fashioned, but the application isn't. It's, this is a good example of a manufacturer uh, finding a way uh, that's quick and, and it's interesting too. I mean, I, I can't say that I, I hate it. I mean, but I um, I think so. If this came to me, Mona, this chair, I would be I would be hand tufting this. I would be doing this by hand. I might say to the client, uh, if you have too many buttons. I might try to minimize the buttons a little bit. Or the other alternative to that is just putting upholstering the back and then just putting buttons on the surface. See if your client wants to do that. 
of course there's a difference in pricing and I'm going to talk a little bit about that because I know Mona is in that stage. She, she's actually a, a getting into the professional stage of upholstering which means that she's taking money for her projects which is good. Um, what I would suggest is price that out to two or three different ways. One way would be just to upholster it plain uh, with no buttons. Um, the other way would be upholstering it with surface buttons and the other way would be upholstering it not as it is because you don't know you don't want to do that unless you have a machine I don't know about you have a quilting machine at home a big quilting machine I would be very surprised you can't do this um, I would say then the third option is the most expensive option would be hand tufting so your pricing on that if I were to do this because uh, you're talking about a restoration one two and three one being the cheapest would be 300 and then the second would be about 425 and the third one would go up to about seven or eight hundred dollars for that chair that's a lot of work it's a lot of work it's a nice chair so it's interesting yeah um, if she has any follow-up questions she can I think I answered most of them though so good um, as usual guys live questions in the chat right Patrick and they put the live questions on the chat yes uh, on YouTube always gets first priority so here we have uh, Sedona she's talking about uh, or you know commenting on the uh, restoring a vintage 1950s uh, Danish chair and she says great tutorial I found a pair of MCM chairs in the garbage Wow somebody didn't know what they were throwing away you guys um, stained and restored the legs. I was nervous about removing the upholstery and I thought about adding a few zigzag springs to a, to a repair kit. But now I think I'm going to tackle the cushion properly. Good. You know, I'm always amazed. Uh, you know, sometimes I forget how many videos we've done and I, sometimes I forget a whole video. We haven't had a comment about this particular video for a while. So I, I, I forget how many we've done, but how much information is out there. It, it's really good. I hope that most of it's good information, that this proves to me that it, it might be. I mean, I'm not perfect. I might, I might present something. I, we have an off day. You know, that, that always is a possibility. <laughs> but we think that uh, most of the information on YouTube is really good. Um, and, and I'm always surprised that somebody's actually uh, improved uh, their career through the YouTube channel. But I'm never surprised at how much people gain from the online classes. And I want to bring that up, Broadway Upholstery School online classes. We've just had a couple of people join that, right? The yearly yeah, subscription. Yeah, a few more new yearly members. And I just I want to mention on those lines, reminded me of the new class coming up October 1st. We have a new class coming up October 1st, and that's the tufted class. Hey, Mona, <laughs> there's, a, there's a class about tufting, about hand tufting coming up. It's just perfect for you. It will go through step by step in what you need to do. It's perfect for somebody like you. And I think the yearly subscriptions, I think, are the best prices um, available, Pat. I think best buy, anyhow. We have another live question. This is from Daniel. Hey, Daniel. When and why did they start with buttons on furniture? What's the history behind the buttons? Oh, that's a great question, and I really appreciate that. So, so originally, fabrics were very bland. Um, I'm talking like 200 years ago, so we go back 200 years uh, for this question. So they were very bland. They were um, your choices were mohair uh, and horsehair fabric, pretty much. Uh, there might be a couple of cotton linen, you know, maybe French prints or something. But the, we didn't get a lot of those in this country. But anyhow, horsehair fabric, very black, you know. Uh, they did have diamond shaped horsehair fabric which was really fancy but it was really dark black and black and mohair you know that was uh, not dyed in too many colors back then and so so the Victorian era let's let's go back to that era you know like a 1800s mid 1800s or your earlier and um, so what do you do as an upholsterer? Um, your job is to make it look beautiful. So buttons and tufting and things like that, tassels even, were added um, to the piece by the upholsterer to enhance the bland fabrics of the day. So I always get a kick out of it. You know, I get a beautiful French settee that's you know possibly even early 1800s that comes to the shop. 
that's got this beautiful tufting, um, and I know the history of those buttons and the tufting, and the people pick a, a stripe to put on. And I tell them, I said, do you really want a stripe? It's not, it's going to just, all the stripe's going to go off, and it's really not going to show off my workmanship. So that's, that's the whole idea of tufting, uh, not to really put a fancy fabric on it, you know. Even today, I, I don't like doing it, but anyhow. So people will put almost anything on a tufted piece, um, which is interesting. So that's the answer. That's really good, Daniel. That's a very intuitive question uh, about that. Uh, so it's up to us um, as an upholsterer. I remember, it reminds me of a story. There was oh, a, here we go. Yeah. No, there was a song. <laughs> there was, did, Daniel? I never actually saw this song. I only heard about it. It was at the design center. This was a few years ago, Patrick. Uh, somebody somewhere, like a famous designer, decided to put all the elements, the beautiful elements of the, the labor on a sofa, on, on this sofa. And I remember it, Pat, this is like 25 years ago. I, mean, I always remember the price was like nineteen dollars or $20,000 for this sofa, Patrick. And, and it had everything. It, it had tassels. It had French tufted diamond tufted. It had French natural nails that were scalloped in the front. It, yeah, I mean, anything you could think of in design and like labor design was on that sofa. No, there was no holes by, you know, so uh, that was interesting. It just reminded me of that story. I, I think it was a little overdone, don't you guys? I, I really, I really do. So we used to, on, we used to also do fringe. It also had fringe. And when you do a fringe, just FYI, I haven't done a fringe sofa with tassels probably in 30 years. But I remember how to do it. Um, and so the way to do it, the trick is, you know, people, people put the fringe on. They just put the fringe on, right? And let's say even on this sofa, this sofa is about three inches off the ground, right? So they put the fringe on and they say, oh, it looks bare. Because what happens is at the top of the fringe, like this, the fringe is six inches long. And at the top of the fringe, it's really gathered. It's really like close. But then towards the bottom of the fringe, it separates. So you might have like a half inch to an inch gap in between each fringe on the bottom. So the trick is, in case you guys ever want to do one, is to drop a skirt behind the fringe. So that's the trick. Always without put a skirt behind the fringe. Never put a fringe on by itself. It's amazing I remember that. That was so long ago. Um, I bet it comes around though. I bet somebody's going to walk through that door next week with, with fringe. <laughs> Oh man, I don't know. We have fun. Um, so now this one, we got a lot of comments on this, on this video. How to upholster 1860s chair, part six, with the double piping. But I was, I wanted to go back to Patrick. We were talking about the online classes, Patrick. Yeah. And that we got this new class, this segue that Mona had. This is a good segue from her, her project and her difficulties she's going to have with that project. Um, she goes on and watched Michelle do it. Um, Michelle did an absolute astounding job. And she did it on a piece of furniture that didn't have much of a back like yours, Mona. You should check it out. Uh, but anybody out there who wants to do diamond tufting should check Michelle out. And I want to ask you, Patrick, did Michelle do a cushion, a loose cushion on that or no? I thought she did, but well, it was so long ago, it was filmed a Yeah, but did ago. we, who, who was doing the editing? Was it you or? Michaela was. Do you remember if she did a cushion on that? Do you remember, Michaela? Did, did Michelle actually sit here? I thought I was teaching yeah. her. Yeah, she did sit there. She did? Yeah, she did. And I remember that. We showed Michelle, that's, that is worth the price if you just wanted to get one video online at Broadway Upholstery School, because everybody has questions about how to make a cushion, Michelle actually made the cushion on that on that next one. What's the title of that one, Patrick? I call it the Diamond Chair. The Diamond Chair. The Diamond Chair. So check that out. So I was talking like I always do about the YouTube. What's the difference between the YouTube channel, which which is great, and the online classes? It's the amount of information you're getting that I forgot. That's pretty much. Does that make any sense? When I'm teaching one-on-one -on, -one on the cam on YouTube, I'm not teaching everything that's, that I know because it's so mechanical for me that I'm not verbalizing it. But with the student, I am. And it's, it's like every class has three or four of those. I look at the camera and go, this is something that I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't think of to teach you on YouTube. So it's not to say YouTube isn't, we love YouTube. It's just that I think, I think that that's the difference between the two. That's all. There's, there's a lot of effort that's put in all the videos, you know. 
but anyhow. So we got a question from Kathy on that 1860s uh, chair part six, the double piping. She says, thank you for this series. It gives me the confidence to start a love seat that my grandparents bought from a secondhand store when they got married in 1912. Can you believe that? 1912, so they bought an antique. This, now this is, in case you guys didn't know, back in the old days, people would buy antiques as gifts. Uh, in this case, they bought an antique for themselves, but they would also be presented as a gift to a newly married couple. So when you think about it, they were probably getting an 1850, maybe uh, settee, a Victorian style or, or uh, Empire style sofa or something. And, and now she's, here we are in 2020. <laughs> think about this, you guys. So 2020, we're sitting here in 2020 and she's, she's looking at a video that we did here at Broadway Upholstery School and she's got the confidence to upholster that. I think that's a great story. So we're talking multiple generations later um, and here she is, right? It's great. I love, I love these stories. Keep these coming, you guys, because these question and answers, you know, we make great effort here to, to, to do this, all this, you know, besides trying to run a custom shop at the same time. Um, so these comments like this really, I love it and it keeps me going. It, keeps, it, it makes it worthwhile. You know, I'm glad that people are, um, we're helping people out there one way or the other. So now we got a question uh, from the upholstery show last week from Jane. She says, hi, please could you tell me when your live shows will take place? Every Thursday. Every Thursday, right Patrick? Because yes. during the summer we had some, you know, vacation stuff and, and so one week we missed a week for vacation and then we had a couple of uh, switches there. Yeah, it all <laughs> happen from time to time, but mostly you can yeah. find us on Thursdays. Three o'clock, Patrick? Yeah, three o'clock. It'll and that changes, changes sometimes, but rarely, especially during yeah. the winter. Right? I mean, it is difficult maintaining a, a time, a, a constant time and date because because we are a shop here, too. I mean, once in a while, you'll hear somebody knock on the door <laughs> or the phone ring or something, you know? That, that, that's, that's, we're live, right? Uh, so the next question is an American Victorian sofa stripping and measuring for fabric. That was a recent one, wasn't it, Patrick? That That's we somewhat did? recent. <clears throat> this is from Adventures of Rim Googles. What? It's Lord of the Rings. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Well, if he wants adventure, he should check out Extreme Upholstery, right? You guys, you guys. I don't want to talk about that again. Oh my okay. God! Please. <laughs> but you know, he's talking about adventure. So um, the comment is on that video, and, and Adventure says, we just bought some Victorian style sofa and chair, and we have them in the garage waiting to close in the house to move in. And well, they got black mold, and wondering if we can refix them ourselves without paying too much money for someone to fix it. We're thinking of getting them steam cleaned first and see if that removes the mold. So I'm not an expert on cleaning, um, although what you want to, you might want to check out a process called ozoning. Um, I know ozoning takes out um, fire smell um, and also uh, infestation, bug infestations. You might want to check this out for mold. I have a feeling that it might do the same thing. Don't ask me how it works. I have no idea. And anybody that owns an ozone machine that's offering this service probably won't be able to tell you either because it's you know so scientific. Uh, but anyhow, check that out uh, because what you, I tell you, it would be a lot cheaper than, than stripping these down to the frame and starting all over again. They're never the same when you do that. You know, I mean, I'm an expert. I like doing this work, and I, I would admit that the original is usually a little bit better, you know, and maybe it's just because I'm stuck in history or something, I don't know, but I'll give you a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Um, Noel, the Noel womb chair, W-O-M-B, the womb chair, you guys can Google it. So the vintage one was made with latex, a thin layer of molded latex. And the new ones, the new Noel manufacturers, the new one, is done with a half inch foam. And now you would think that that wouldn't make much of a difference, but I can tell the difference. So it's, that's, it's subtle, but it's there. So, so they don't, we don't use this molded latex anymore. Nobody does. 
Um, I think you can get it in sheets. Somebody's going to say, well, you can still get it in sheets. I'm not a big believer in latex. I don't use it. Um, and the memory foam, I would stay away from that. Memory foam uh, makes the fabric walk too much. And walking fabric, you know, every time you sit on it walks, actually causes a lot of stress on seams. So um, you always need that buffer in between. But I can tell the difference between getting back to the womb chair. The vintage, let's say that it looked brand new, and, and the brand new, I can tell the difference. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's just subtle, subtle things like that. Uh, so, in answer to this question, or the, I would say, do everything you can to get rid of the mold before you go to removing all that beautiful double-stitched material underneath that. Um, if, the, if you can't get success removing the mold, try to take things off in layers. Try to take the top fabric off first. And then, if the mold went down to the cotton, which I probably doubt, uh, take the cotton off. The cotton, if, if the mold got into the uh, horsehair, take just the top, pick the top layer of horsehair off. If it got below that, take the second layer off. If it got below that, undo the stitching and take the third layer off. Save the horsehair, you can wash it. If it somehow penetrated to the burlap, which I doubt, you could take that off and so on. But try to keep as much of the material as you can if, you, if, if you're going to go that way. Especially the horse hair. So, Lauren um, is commenting now on how to upholster a dining room chair part five, final step, double piping. Another double piping question. Could decorative tacks been used to finish the edges? Could decorative tacks been used to finish the edges instead of the piping? Just make sure I know the chair. So, that is an interesting question, and I have a really good answer. So, on dining room chairs, um, you see some dining room chairs with some tack work. The second time you do a dining room chair or any furniture with more tack work, because the tacks are big, right? The big shanks on the tack, and it's a heavy treatment. You're going to compromise the wood. More importantly, on a dining room chair, you really have to know what you're doing when you're putting tacks in, because the dining room chairs don't have much support, especially up at the top. So if you're hammering those nails in, and you're not thinking about the joints below, you're going to get your nails in and then look below and all your framework is probably going to be messed up. So in sensitive areas, I'm not saying you can't do it. It's really a tough job though, you guys, because you want to be tacking as you're looking at the chair. You don't want to be putting the chair down on a flat surface. You need a flat surface is what I'm saying. So when you're doing a dining room chair like on the back and you're using those tacks, your hand actually has to be supporting the, the back of the chair. So you, you got your hand here and you're tacking like this. And you can feel it when you do that. You can, you can feel the force of your tacking that hammer. If you, if you just tack it like that, first of all, you're going to be bouncing off the tack. But that tack, that, that frame is going to really take some abuse. So to be very careful with those French nails where you put them. Usually you only see them in meaty areas of a piece of furniture too. So you should, you should consider, the double piping is a really good alternative, you know, you know, it's a very light treatment, but it looks, I think it looks great. So it's a good question though. So any more live questions? No? Okay. So page two on the shell back, shell back chair, the fabric, oh by the way, I think we got some news about Jimmy, don't we Patrick? Right. Jimmy will be will be coming back. Jimmy on the online classes, Broadway Upholstery School online classes. You've seen Jimmy featured. How many video? How many classes did he do, Patrick? Uh, like five at this point. Oh wow, five! Wow. Hey, just speaking of Jimmy, just joined the chat. Jimmy, we we're just talking <laughs> about you. You you came back from your coconut fiber tour of the world, did you? Oh, did you? Where you visited God. the famous well, museums? Never ran. I don't know. <laughs> We want a full report about the different types of coconut fiber and batting. I think Jimmy was going to take a worldwide tour of batting. He was going to visit all the famous batting manufacturers from around the world. Wow, that sounds amazing. Uh, Forget it, about sitting on the beach and relaxing. Well, I think you know, factories. It, of course, he, he found that fascinating. I mean, he visited Dacron factory, I heard, I heard from him. The horsehair factory, I heard from him. I'm glad everything worked out there. He went to uh, the what else? Uh, the cotton, the mill down there in the south, and then he went to Hawaii, and we haven't heard from him in how many weeks? 
I don't know. He probably disappeared. Well, he was investigating coconut fiber we'll factories. Watch triangle. Uh, yeah, maybe. I, I think I, I want to know what happened, Jimmy. What happened in the coconut fiber world out there? <laughs> We're teasing Jimmy, I think, aren't we, Patrick? Maybe. Uh, don't go away, Jimmy. Uh, the next question, shellback chair fabric. Um, a demonstration, this is from Ann Irwin. She's, she's an original friend of ours, isn't she, Patrick? Yes. Uh, a demonstration with the fabric would be very helpful. So, what I did was I just showed... I just showed how to do it to show back. I didn't actually cut the fabric, right? So someday we should we should make a note of that, Patrick, to do that. And I'm starting to think, oh, the reason I mentioned Jimmy on a serious note was that Jimmy's going to be doing, did you say he's going to be doing a sofa, Patrick? I don't know. A love seat or a sofa? <laughs> so That's a surprise. That yeah, would be a will. first. <laughs> well, the next thing is a sofa. Maybe we can have him come in and do this one. Sure. I know he saw it the day when he was here, and he seemed to want to tackle that. So. Well, I don't know. He doesn't know what he's getting himself into. It took four men to bring it in here. Did I mention that? Yes, I did. <laughs> Only one man will upholster it, though. Right, Patrick? Right. There's, there's got to be a song about that somewhere, like, He was a big man, <laughs> but the sofa was bigger. <laughs> Something like that. Okay. I, I'm going off subject here. I've gotten a little tired, Patrick. Is that is that toast is that toast burning? Oh my god. <laughs> hey, when I go off subject like that, from now on I want you to say, hey, do you smell toast burning? Okay, Patrick? I think it's just funnier to let you go. <laughs> but if you say that I come back. <laughs> Anyhow. So um, on the next one, the upholstery show live, this was the Chippendale is done. Um Anna says, I have spring dining room chairs and I don't like them. In your opinion, would it be a bad idea to replace them with a wood cutout? What would your professional opinion and options be? Well, Anna, I think I'm right with you. I don't like springs in dining rooms. That should have never happened. Um, when you see these older chairs, these older saddle seat chairs, that dining room chairs, saddle seat in the front, they curve a little bit like this, and other chairs that aren't um, I think about brand names like Baker and Henderson. They're upholstered seats. They're, they're about, they look like they're this thick, but, but that's mo mainly the wood. The padding on top is very little and it's firm. It's very firm. So you might have the webbing, the burlap. I don't suggest that wood cut up. I go to the webbing, go to the, you know, the jute webbing. Jute webbing, burlap. Um, if you don't, and then a little edge roll around, around the top. If you don't have horse hair, I would prefer the horse hair at that point, you can use like a one inch piece of foam, cotton, and your fabric. And, and what that does, you'd be surprised. I've, I've, I've cured people's digestion problems, you know, this is another thing an upholsterer does you don't realize. So I'm going to sit sideways there. So when you have a spring dining room chair, so if you mention my shoulders, let's say my shoulder down to the floor would be, let's say, 50. 42 inches, right, from the floor. When you have a spring seat, that's where you are. And your table is designed a little bit higher than that. That um, I don't know if I can explain this, but when I fix it, when I when I fix the chairs, I take the springs out. I definitely think you should take the springs out. I would definitely. Um, your shoulder, your shoulders go up about an inch and a half to two inches. Believe it or not. And people say to me, I we can't believe how much better this is. It's 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 a surprise because they're not they're not soft and they're not slouching. And they're firm and they're not slouching, so they're up like this. And you know, your elbows sometimes <laughs> if if a supporting um, proper etiquette maybe not, but but a lot of times you see people with their elbows on the table, but your elbows are not at that height when you're when you're down like this, you're more like this. So it really makes a huge difference, that bottom line. That inch and a half or two inches that you're, you're going to gain when you go to the, the treatment that I just described makes all the difference in the world. I mean, after all, it's not a wing chair. It's not, a, it's not an upholstered seat. It's not an upholstered chair. It's not made for that. It's made for dining. So you never see the old chairs. The old chairs are always done right. The old, any old chair, dining room chair or, or club chair or wing chair, it's always prop, properly 
done right. And even though people back then were a lot smaller than us uh, across the board, you're still going to fit in, no matter how big you are, you're going to fit into these, into these chairs because they're, they're properly scaled, they're properly, the angles are right, you know, and they're properly stuffed. Does that make sense, you guys? Um, so the next question is about now offering supplies, uh, store is up. I should mention that, you guys. So um, we've selected the supplies that I know are true and been tested by me on the store, on the online class on the online store at Broadway Upholstery. When you go on there, you're going to see some items. you got some items too for sale, Patrick, with all well, the I just updated the page. We have a whole page full of individual supplies. We yeah. have your signature kits that make things a lot easier for people yeah. with specific projects. Mm -hmm. And of course, we have the tools. So You know, admittedly, the, the kits and the, the videos I, um, are, are for, I think, th there's three, three groups. The um, introductory, there's the journeyman, you know, after after you've done all your introductory work and you've done a few pieces, let's say 100 pieces, and then journeyman, and then I would say near professional upholsters. I think that uh, professional upholsters can e even gain uh, some knowledge from my knowledge as well as I gain from this. Um, so no two upholsters are alike. We all have our own signatures, but I think with me, when, when I'm presenting on the website, um, with the supplies and, and the YouTube videos and also Broadway upholstery online is a technique of teaching that I've developed over a long period of time, you know, thousands of people I've taught. And um, I think it's because um, I could teach almost anybody that the videos resonate. So they resonate and I think there's a lot of learning that goes on, I hope, I'm just hoping. Um, and I well, know. Dale just mentioned a cool comment. I'm not sure what he means. He said you should make a merchandise trailer. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he means a physical trailer or like a movie trailer. Well, I think he means a movie trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Both of those would be cool. We already have a trailer up, a video trailer. Well, don't mention it. Yeah. Uh, if you go want ahead. to check out our, uh, no, I already posted it, a video trailer about what we sell on the site. If you want to check that out, but okay. you know, Sunday maybe we'll have a mobile operations center where we go around. And, but uh, is Jimmy still on there, Patrick? <laughs> listening. I think so. Well, uh, don't mention trailer to him. You know what happened. Oh, to, right. You remember what yeah, happened to his, yeah, no. his trailer. Well, that's what happened. We stole Jimmy's Hollywood trailer. Well, we're going to be using that for our sell merchandise around the country. And we hadn't seen him since. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't seen him since. I know. Maybe he's still sitting in the bed, in the trunk or something. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, nice trailer there with star, you know, gold star on the door. Right. And said, please knock before entering. <laughs> He's sitting in the back of all the, uh, he's on the pile of uh, burlap and everything. <laughs> oh, well. You know, I, I really have to say, the site really has become a whole other, that's why we call it the central hub of upholstery, because we literally, we offer almost everything, everything to do with upholstery except for fabric at this point. Right, and it's that's... kind of cool, I don't know, I, 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 it seems like one day we went on, we, one day we turned around and it was, we went from just online classes to now we're doing everything. Well, you know, and there was a point there where I, I kind of hesitated and I, you know, there might be some old videos out there of me just hesitating not doing that because I just, I thought, of, you know, a whole focus on the YouTube before we did the online classes were just informative, just teaching people and just being out in the world. We weren't interested in, uh, we didn't think that, you know, about money or anything like that. Um, and we were very proud of those. But then we started, what was happening was that there's such a, a huge amount in the library, such a big volume, that people were starting to come to us and ask you questions about supplies. And then we were hearing stories about kind of nightmarish stories about getting the wrong supplies and by maybe some unscrupulous uh, people out there selling uh, copies of, let's say, jute twine, they're selling nylon twine. I mean, I'm talking spring twine and they're, they're saying it's the same and it isn't. So we wouldn't, you're not going to see that on our website, you know, because I, I handpicked everything that went up there to make sure that it was stuff that I know I, I used. So I think for that reason alone, you know, you, you're going to be eliminating a lot of uh, grief if you're going to be out there looking for suppliers. You're going to find that you can't get, you know, there's no central, like Patrick said, you call it the central, central hub. Yeah. You know, and if there's something on there that you needed that um, I feel uh, could be put up there, we'll do that. We'll add it, right, Patrick? 
Yeah, maybe coconut fiber. That's all tough. Coconut fiber is <laughs> tough, unless Jimmy comes back with a good report about that factory there. <laughs> I want to hear about it. Um, so the, let me get to this question uh, or comment. So pick me up with Shelby, that's the name. Uh, nice. Love the expansion and the channel. I will definitely use you as a, as I, oh boy, this is a great segue for what I was just talking well, about. Well, I had that up the whole time. <laughs> yeah, but, but I didn't know I that. I thought you read it. I no, know. I didn't. I got lost. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. It's just another great segue, Patrick. Right. Nice. Uh, love the expansion and the channel. I will definitely use you as I grow and stock my supply cabinet. Separate but related, can you recommend a good suede protector? I can't. I'm sorry. You'll be careful with suede and leather and even fabric when you're talking about adding anything to it. Especially suede's tricky, so be careful. I, I don't have any recommendation on that. And then she goes on, I'm tempted to fall back on Scotch Guard. I wouldn't use Scotch Guard on suede, I know that. Because I'm, you could test it um, somewhere because I know that I know the name. Or Kiwi, which I've only used for shoes, never furniture. Suede on furniture is different than suede shoes, I can tell you that. Um, I know that much. I'm pre-treating rough out leather that will be used on the arms of a wingback chair. Well, she seems very ambitious. I would like, if she's watching, uh, I would love to see some of her stuff. I wish she, is she on the forum, Patrick? I'm not sure I don't recognize the name. Um, it would be great to have her on the forum to show these things. It's a little unusual, you know, that somebody is, um, sounds like she's tanning roughing out her leather. That's, that's, you know, I had somebody once took my class, Patrick. She actually wove her own fabric. Wow. Do you believe that? Wow. So she, she wove that's her insane. own fabric and then she came and she upholstered her own chair. Now that's, that's the ambition, you guys. Yeah, right? that's, all, that's like the whole thing from scratch. The whole thing. I would love, I would love to Did be she cut the wood to, from the tree too? <laughs> I don't know. Do we still have that picture of that tree that was growing through that? No, I wanted to find that, but it yeah. got, got lost. Yeah, that was I just want to mention the cool the comment here from uh, Not So Ignorant. She mentions a really cool possible idea for a video we can do. Sure. Is, uh, so speaking of chiropractors, I need one after this week's upholstery work. Yeah. <laughs> and she said, um, a video asking for pointers and building ergonomic features into chairs. What do you teach us? That is a really good question. Patrick, note, note that really. I know so sometimes that could be like, you know, the, chiro the perfect chiropractic chair. I don't know. Well, I can tell you a story. Of, uh, you know, you can really get I'm going to write that on the whiteboard right now. Uh, no, the whiteboard's being used, Patrick. No, no, this one here. Oh, that one. Yeah, we have a whole list of video ideas. Yeah, please. And uh, Anil just joined in and we have his ideas written down. <laughs> yeah, he w he's going to be interesting if I ever get to this piece. Well, that just went up. You should check it out. Oh, yeah. Tell them to check new YouTube. Tell them to check that out. Manufacturer's piece. Yep. Um, and let me just keep reading on this one. I'm tempted to fall back. Well, no, I did read this one. So, all right. So, we, we finished reading that. Let's go to the next one. I thought I had another point there, though, before I moved on, Patrick. What were we talking about? Uh, I forgot. I cut it off. <laughs> you sure? Oh, it was about the comment that you just read to me about the, about the, uh, the design and about how how there's really um, universal um, angles that are used on furniture to make them comfortable, to make them be able to be sit on. Now this Chesterfield next to me, I don't know if you can see it, but all of the, the straight, it has a straight back and a straight seat on it. Not so comfortable, I have to tell you, not so comfortable. You're going to be, you ever sit on a piece of furniture where you're, you're trying to find throw pillows to put here and there and before you know it you got like seven throw pillows you know underneath you and in the back of you and on your head and everywhere that's because maybe the furniture wasn't designed well so um, keep that in mind that's like gonna be an excellent video I think we should do it maybe we'll, we'll start with the frame a bare frame Patrick yes yeah, you followed up I said I found ordinary cornstarch and soft brush the best way to clean greasy marks off leather slash suede Ooh, that's a good tip that sounds like somebody that sounds like one of those, um, you know, Heloise tips. Heloise tips, you know, those tips that, those old-fashioned tips, Patrick, that you wouldn't know about. No, that sounds really cool. Is Jimmy still on there? Yes, he is. Jimmy, you're being awfully quiet. I hope we didn't offend you with that coconut fiber remarks <laughs> and that world batting tour that you took. We're not talking baseball either, right? 
Um, so Kim, <laughs> bless you. Kim says upgrading store bought furniture. Is that just a new common, Patrick? Uh, no, we got a new one. We got a few as we're <laughs> as we're live right now. But this will look spectacular. I'm not sure what upholstery store bought furniture. We just we did another one before. Before this one, right, Patrick? Yeah, it's on the same series. I just can't remember what, what she's referring to, and I can't see the picture that well. So the next one is repairing springs using home tools. So this is interesting, because I know there's a lot of people out there who probably watched the YouTube video once. And if you're one of those people, please subscribe anyhow. Um, I know I've used YouTube videos. I had a dishwasher that was broken at home. Funny story, I should tell you, uh, it had some water that was collecting underneath and I went through all the troubleshooting that the nice gentleman online, he was a nice gentleman. And this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about, about, you know, sometimes the common sense when you're teaching on YouTube kind of flies out the, flies out of your head. You don't, you, you think it's so much about the exciting, you know, information that you're going to give for the, for the camera that you might forget little things. So I'm going to tell you this story. So there's water in the, in, the, in the dishwasher, so he says, okay, take, take out the hoses, I did that, I cleaned the hoses, take out this hose, clean this hose, take out the mechanism, okay, take out the mechanism. I went through all of the steps. Still there's water every time underneath. I'm thinking, I, I can't figure this out for nothing. So then I thought, I'm going to have to pull out the dishwasher. So I pull out the dishwasher, and on the back right leg, the floor, there was a little piece of flooring missing so that that back right leg was actually over time as the dishwasher was being used that the dishwasher just tilted off just slightly into that little ditch right and you couldn't even notice it from the front and i said son of a gun i took the i took the dishwasher out and it has those screws the dishwashers you can unscrew you can screw the legs so i unscrewed that leg to about a half of an inch I put the dishwasher back, guess what, the next cycle, no more water. I guess the moral of the story is, maybe the first thing, if you're going to be doing a YouTube video on water on a dish, water left after a cycle in a dishwasher, maybe you should say, check to make sure that it's level. That would have saved me about 10 hours of work. <laughs> and I'm sure there are videos out there, right Patrick, that yeah. we've done. Right. Where where people are saying, why didn't he just say that in the beginning? <laughs> right. Oh. So that's why again I'll say the online classes. I know I keep going on about them, but I I'm impressed by not me, but by the people like Jimmy. Jimmy, I am giving you a compliment now, and and Michelle. I'm going to have other people hopefully. I'm impressed by the questions that they ask, and also your questions, of course. But while I'm teaching them. I've always been impressed by the intuitive uh, questions that I get. It makes me a better upholsterer too, by the way. So yeah, well, there's a lot, and it's working because we have at least eight people who got our master certificate. So we have eight people. Patrick said there's little certificates we give master certificates. Yeah. Um, and be just, sure if you haven't got it yet, contact us. We'll send it to you if you're one of our right. You want our yearly subscribers. Is that you get it for a yearly subscriber, Patrick? After yeah, you... I mean, it's on the honor system. We have no way of knowing if you watched every video, you know what I mean? But I'm <laughs> so, sure if people are going to get that, they, they probably will. I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, so, why get know, it? To come tell us that you did the whole thing, and that's pretty much yeah. how you get it. You know, I, you know, another thing about the YouTube channel, if, if you have a shop um, and... Um, you're doing upholstery and you're, you're, you're kind of getting into the groove, you've been doing it a little bit while. I would be honored if you had the YouTube channel on with me as kind of like your companion, like or your mentor in shop, even though I'm not directly answering questions, but we're going to bring up something in a minute about the Zoom classes. Remind me, Patrick, mm -hmm. maybe. Well, um, we just got an interesting comment about that Yeah, on the website. Isn't that something? It's very funny how that works out. Isn't it? Um, I don't have, I'm not seeing a computer screen or anything, you guys, so so all this is just... Well, now we got a comment on our website, somebody asking for something just like Zoom. <laughs> yeah. So, if you have a shop, and if you're working, and, and I know sometimes it can be a very solitary, um, you know, business, you know. Um, and I remembered when I was learning, I, ha I was so, didn't understand completely how lucky I was at the time, but I, I was in a shop that would employ older men, um, some of them in their 80s with so much knowledge they were all around me and they were around me every day 
I used to get in there early to be around them to before the mess happens, you know, during the course of the day, all the action starts. But getting there early, you could learn a few more things from these guys. So hopefully, I know that there's not a lot of situations out there f for learning like that, um, and I think this might be the only thing that somebody has, you know, me and the, and the YouTube channel or whatever. Put the YouTube channel on, just keep looping, you know, the, the videos, just, just to maybe have for com companionship, you know. Uh, or ment being a you know mentor, I'd be honored if you did that. I think it might be a good idea if you can stand it. Um, but anyhow, so the Zoom classes. So it brings up, you know, we get these questions sometimes. You know, like Pam's questions and Mona questions. You know, they they get stuck on things. Um, if we maybe set up some type of a Zoom class, Patrick. Yeah. Um, the technology. Do you believe that the technology is enough right now? To do that, Patrick. Of course. Of course. Do it, we'll do it tomorrow. The, <laughs> the reason I always hesitated on it, you guys, is because of the three dimensional effect. I think that I thought, is there any way you could do three dimensional, Patrick? And if people can respond back, I, mean, I had a good idea. You know, this was your idea. But I'm really like, you would have, of course, you couldn't have the exact piece that somebody else has, but right. you would have that in a in person class anyway. No. You're, you're going around each station helping people out. Right. It would be the same thing, but you're going around to each screen and helping people out. So you look at one screen. But we would have to have like ten screens here. Right. No, no. It's one screen. It's like, <laughs> oh, just, yeah. <laughs> it's all one screen. Jimmy's got, probably going, that dumb. He doesn't know what he's Ten screens. <laughs> <laughs> but no, your well, idea was to have that dummy chair. The reason just, I said. You plane chair. Uh, now don't. You use that to yeah, you know, perform your. The, the dummy chair is a good idea, but don't laugh at that big screen idea. I'll tell you why I said that. Now think about this, Patrick. We have flat screen TVs now. Yeah. If we had the do re me, my choice would be to try to get a big flat screen TV with with the with the image, the actual size of the chair. Let's say. <laughs> Yeah, he thinks I don't he, think the wall's big enough. No, no, it's flat screen, man, flat screen. Yeah, I still don't think it would be Four big. by fours, right? You, you get had ten students, at ten screens. I know, <laughs> but it's just a dream. You could dream, can't you? How about this? They can send a picture and we'll print it out and hang it. <laughs> well, anyhow. So no, but all serious, though, that, that, that was our original direction with the website. We wanted to make them live. Yeah. But we couldn't really swing it at that point. You know? I think it's the next best thing when we have, though. Right. I mean, no, that's been good in its own way. Yeah. The Zoom would have its own, you know, perks. Maybe Zoom would be like a, a an enhancement to the classes. Some people do. Some people like not having you right there live. They like to be able to rewind and go back again and again. I think that's good. People who some people would prefer to have you right there. I don't know. Just overlook the mistakes, you guys. I'm somebody. I'm somebody that would probably prefer the classes we already have. Yeah. It's because it's a little more. Nerve-wracking when the instructor's right there, but some people like that. Okay, so we have a question um, or a comment from Joseph on the repairing springs using hand tools. Um, wow, these workshops are fantastic, and I, I didn't. Patrick didn't write this, to you guys. He he is so generous. <laughs> Thank you, Patrick. <laughs> Let me get through this. Um, to share his craft, especially now when there are so few who have these skills. Nothing beats the shape of original pieces and this makes it possible to restore them. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. And what a nice compliment from Joseph. Thank you. And the last comment we have, and then maybe I have time to show you this sofa a little bit. That's yeah, almost four. But I have a call to go on in a minute. I'm going to do that quick then. Yeah, you got to show us something. Things really cool. Fixing a pop button for free. Yay! Thanks a million. You saved my, me lots of dollars. There you go. So that's great, Jackson. Jackson, um, I don't know where he's from, but you're welcome. And I'm glad you. I'm glad you learned how to do a button, a pop button. I showed that tw two ways. One with the tools that you can get online, the Broadway Upholstery School. And then we, I, I devised a tool or a set of tools and instruction on how to fix a button out of your kitchen drawer, whatever you have in your kitchen drawer. You, anybody would have these things in their kitchen drawer. And I think that that's what Jackson used. You're welcome. So let's quickly do this. I want to show you this baby. So this comes to me as this Chesterfield, this big sofa, right? 
Customers complaining because the buttons keep popping on the, they popped off, as soon as you got them, a couple popped off the seat. All the other buttons are fine. Uh, it's never a good idea to put buttons in a seat. Never do that. Chesterfield sofa, though, that's part of the appeal to it of buttons in a seat. But I guarantee you, no matter how well crafted it is, you're going to have buttons that pop. And not everybody can fix it like that on that last one I read. They're very tricky buttons because they go all the way through the sofa and you need a huge curve ne a button needle to do that. And most people don't have that. So, we're going to do a faux leather in this and we're going to redesign the seat with no buttons. So we're going to have a tight seat. So my job is to try to reconstruct this. So what I did is I took the fabric off, I took all the buttons off, and then I'm going to peel the Dacron on the top. I may or may not use that. And then I want to show you something that happened. Even though this was a pretty good manufacturer, when I opened this up, I couldn't believe. They only have it stapled underneath to this top here. And when I run my finger along here, this is almost like a razor blade, you guys. It's really sharp. Visibly, but like a dull knife, but still, um, what that will do for fabric over time is rip right through it. And what was happening is that the staples, the foam, was going around the staple and, and the foam was loosening up. So this, in no time, the fabric would have went wore through. So I'm going to, this is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to finish with this, you guys. Make it an upholstered seat, no buttons. I'm going to add a finger roll or a piping. You know, you could do the same thing with a piping, you guys. Actually, I might go with the piping because it's smaller. And um, But it, I just want to put it right at the edge, right over the edge, and I'm going to staple into the flange right across, okay? I've got to make sure that that's nice and tight, nice and tight, and it's not going to roll on me, right? Then I'm going to take, because the customer loves the way the sofa feels, fails, and so what I want to make sure I do is uh, not change the integrity which I told the, the customer. I'm going to try to keep the foam. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse it. I'm going to, I'm going to flip it over because the holes in the bottom are a lot smaller than the holes in the, on the top. I'm going to reverse it after my piping is on there. Let's see. Let's just take this off. I'm going to have to take this off. I'm going to have a nice transition in here because, because my piping is there, right? And what I'm going to do is this is going to come off. Easier said than done, right? I'm going to cut this off. Just to show you. Can you see Daniel that? says, watch your finger. I know. Can you see that, Mikhail? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bevel the top of this and take that edge off because we're making it a posted seat, right? Okay, just a little bit more. Then I'm going to bring this wanted day cron up and I'm going to glue it. I'm going to spray glue this right over here, right? And then I'm going to put another big piece of Dacron over that. And then I'm going to have a beautiful transition here. Transition where meaning there's no, there's no uh, really sharp piece of wood. And there's uh, no uh, gully, anything like that. It's going to be beautiful. So Jimmy wants to know how many yards of fabric that's going to take. Jimmy, I, had to, I think this was a 20 yard piece. That's a good question. That was a lot of yardage. So. Well, so do we have any more questions? Is, are we all set? That's it. Well, that was an interesting question and answer. We've got a lot of action going here. And we can't wait for Jimmy to come with his love seat or sofa or whatever he has. But he always comes with a, some good stories too. Right. And hold on, we got one more question before we go. Jimmy asks, what's the difference in yardage between a chair and a sofa? What's the difference in yardage between a chair and a sofa? Sofas on average, like wing chairs, take seven yards. Wing chairs take seven yards. Club chairs uh, with a skirt, for instance, maybe eight yards. So you're looking at at least doubling, a doubling of yardage. That's a good question, Jimmy. A yardage, uh, we did a yardage video, didn't we, Patrick? That yeah, we can, did. And people want to know more about that. I think we can probably follow up on that. 
people should go again. You know, go to right is the YouTube channel Broadway Upholstery. It's too bad. I mean, maybe Pam wants to come in. She's the fabric expert. She can come in at some point, do some more videos. Yeah, we're hoping that Pam, Pam, who was one of the original, one of the original people on the forum, Patrick. No, I mean Pamela, your Pamela. Oh, Pamela, our Pamela, yeah, the fabric, she's the fabric yeah. expert. Yeah. She is good too at picking fabric. Picking fabric is a skill unto itself. You. She guys. has one video that you can check out. Yeah, she has a small video, right, Patrick? Yes. Yeah. All right, well, that will do it. We appreciate it. I want to say a few, few things. The Chippendale is up for, if anyone's interested locally, we're having a problem with uh, freight shipping that we're figuring out. So eventually, it will be available for purchase everywhere. Right, Deb? Yes. So right now, local only. We can deliver it anywhere in New England if you're interested. And then um, the other thing, I'm going to post a poll, you guys, on the forum to see the interest that people might have in these Zoom classes to get some interest going to see how many people will be interested. And then uh, based on what you guys say, we go from there. If anybody wants to see, see us live, you know, live person in classes, then uh, well, maybe you can live person, but you know what I mean. You can offer something like an hour of a Zoom class if people are, are subscribing to the Broadway Upholstery School, something like that, Patrick. Yeah, you, you can maybe think about doing like, you can do a private session, or if somebody should take in the full eight weeks they used to do that could be an option too you know and i think a good time to do that is in the cold weather when people are indoors and we're indoors and we're stuck yeah, we're because stuck unfortunately it doesn't look like we'll be able to get back to the in-person class anytime soon right you right know? not all not every one of us can go off fly off to hawaii to check out uh coconut factories <laughs> coconut fa <laughs> well that's the fifth time i've used that joke so it probably means i'm getting I mean, that's you have to cut you off so. <laughs> So the cane, <laughs> in the old days, they used to take a cane, right, Patrick? Yeah. And take you off by the neck, What's off the stage. What's that thing called, the, uh, the clapper uh, thing in, the, in Hollywood, the end scene? Oh, the trap door? It's usually, a, <laughs> usually <laughs> it starts anyway. All right. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks a lot for tuning yeah. in. Appreciate it.